Welcome to That Moto Show with Dirt Bike TV's Jay Clark and producer Donnie Bales. Number five. Can you believe that, Donnie? Number yeah, five. these are moving along quickly. Number five. That it was, feels it, like I was just here. Who, who's number five? Was oh of course the Dunge man yeah so Dungey. One, one of Donnie's favorite pro riders was Dungey. Why did we all like Dungey? He was clean and smooth, and he he just rode. Yeah, Did, didn't cause no drama, mm -mm. right? No. And the fa and I do think that him switching from Suzuki to KTM and having success. Uh, because I I'm the first one to admit that when Roger like even in you know 13 14 in there. I would have bet you money that I would never own a KTM. Yeah. So, I mean, I, ha I don't want to say this now aloud. I used to say, oh, that's where you go to die. Right. Okay. Remember when Alessi went there, we were like, what are you yeah. doing? But then you meet somebody like Grant and the success he had in Europe on mm -hmm. that bike. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And they just got things turned around there. It's, and, and it's been really good for the sport. I will say that. I think the it's Japanese... It's elevated went, everyone. Right. So we got off topic there, but number five, episode number five, our tech podcast. You can listen to this, watch it on YouTube, all that. So Donnie, Spencer, you guys doing good? Oh, yeah. Doing real right. good. So Ready we're to get, go. We, we do tech podcast questions. You can email us your tech questions if you like. Um, that, that's the best way that we're going to respond to you. And I won't make you wait to the show to respond. I will just answer you back. And then we'll... If it's a cool question that I think other people can benefit from hearing, then we'll bring it in on, on as well. So... Spencer, let's get us started. Let's let's roll. Let's go. Kelly C says, "Hey man, love all your YouTube stuff. I'm restoring a '94 CR250R, mm -hmm. and a while back, I seen a video of you with a few brand new white air boxes. If you don't mind me asking, where'd you get those from? It's hard to find a decent one on eBay. Most are trashed. Thanks for all the awesome content on YouTube. You've helped me a lot. Okay." So I didn't get any brand new ones. We cleaned them up. And so I do have one left because I switched to a black one. So I think I'm gonna have one left if somebody's looking. I don't know if I told them that, but I'm gonna have, because I think I got this black one since then. Uh, but I am gonna have one left. I don't have any air boots for the correct year because uh, I have 125 boots. I have plenty of 125 boots, like a few for some stupid reason. It's, it's a mess. I've learned way more about CR250s than I ever wanted to know from 94 to 96. I, I wish I didn't know all this, but and Spencer really wishes he didn't know, but we learned all this. So anyway, the I white, even, I've even worked on those bikes. Yeah, so the, I put yeah, the radiators you, on. You, you did really good. That one day we, yeah. we did a ton of stuff. Yeah. So we need to do another one of those days to finish these last two. Spencer and I are going to get jamming. We're, we're, we're getting close. You all need to get jamming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we, how did you clean those up? Like, what was the best so the, So the first thing is you degrease them, you know, soak them in a, get a bucket and soak them in like Simple Green a cleaner, power wash them again and again. Then we took them to Sano Metal Finish who sand blasted, vapor blasted, cleaned them up. So people don't realize that you can vapor blast plastic like that. Yep, no, no idea. And it come out really nice. So as long as it's not scratch, and, and then we did have some with scratches. I kind of sanded them a little bit before I took them to Sano, sand them, and then he can blend them in. Came out really nice. Does, does Sano accept shipping and ship out? Yes. Yep. So yep. we can even give him that information. Right. So you can, you can, he's in SoCal. You can do that if you're uh, looking to. So that's a great option it is cleaning them up. There's no place, and everybody's asking ridiculous prices. First of all, all the CRs that I bought and so forth were so cheap, and a couple cool guys gave me some you know, bins of parts that were basically a bike, some basket cases, and I, had a, and I bought a couple real cheap. I could have been on, I could have got six or seven of these bikes, but I stopped. You know, I promised. I mean, everybody goes, why'd you stop at five? I go, well, because six would be too many, right? You That's, said that at three, though. Because when you had three, you were like, okay, I'm going to stop at three. And then you got two more. And I'm like, oh. Do you ever see the great outdoors where uh, yeah. John Candy eats that 96 ounce <laughs> yeah. steak? That's you with these bikes. Yeah. You've eaten well, too much. I did stop. I okay. did stop. All right. So that's airbox help for you right there. Yes. This is my favorite question out of all the questions that we got here oh, on no. today's show. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like this one. It comes from Abu Talib. It says, hi, Jay. Quick question. Is it okay to oil the air filter of a WR450F with any motor oil? Or with power steering oil, sometimes it's hard to get the manufacturing lubricants over here. Any advice is appreciated. Okay, so obviously, with, by Spencer's accent, you noticed he was speaking from another language. There. Yeah. Okay. So, so first of all, I will say that we use like an FFT, a, a tacky, uh, you know, air filter oil. You want something that's really good. I like it when you put your hands together when they're all and they comes apart and they're stringy. That way, you know it's grabbing all the dirt you can. You want that thing really packed in there and soaked. And we have videos showing how we 
uh, oil the filter and how we make sure that it's all saturated through the filter. So is it okay to run oil? The answer is really no, but it's better than nothing. So if I was to run oil for the day, I'd run the oil and I would chain, you know, try to wash it and clean it straight away, but it's going to let a lot more particles through than a good filter oil would. So it would be better than nothing if you wanted to go ride. Uh, but in any type of dusty or sandy conditions, it's probably going to pass, uh, you know, some through. And I would do it straight away, wash it so that it's it's all fresh. Well, that tackiness on on filter uh, oil really does two things, right? It doesn't let the oil suck through into mm -hmm. the motor, right? Right, and it captures the particles. So the the motor oil would more likely go through, just suck right through. Right. It's just gonna it's gonna go away like so quick. That's the problem. I wouldn't even let it set a day or two, you know? I would use it straight away if I was to do something like that. What about something crazy like vegetable oil or something no, like that? I don't know. What would be tacky enough? If you could find yeah. the spray oil, that'd probably be better than just motor oil. Like they have spray filter oil. Yeah, so on spray oils, when I do those, I'll still have rubber gloves on, spray it, mat it down, spray it, and do that if I have to use a spray oil. Yeah. That type kind of deal. All right. So. Kaylin G says, just wondering what top end piston kit you recommend for my O2 CR250. I replaced the reeds and figured it's time for a top end. Maybe a guy should do the bottom end too. What are your thoughts? Here's some picks. Okay, so Weisco on the piston. We, we really like the Weisco's forge pistons on a, on a two stroke like that. And if you're thinking you should do a bottom end, you should before it does it for you. And then it wipes, especially, here's the problem. You got a 20 year old bike, uh, 22 year old bike cases and everything. If, the, if that bottom end goes out and wipes out your cases, you're done. So if you're at all wondering if you should do a bottom end, then do it because it's just gonna be safer. We like to rebuild them with a Pro X rod and Pro X has some really nice uh, Japanese uh, main bearings that are awesome. So that's what I would, the route I would go. Mm. All right, Mark R. J, which bike would you buy? A 2023 Gas Gas EX350F with the older frame or the 23 KTM 350XCF? He does desert, some track, no racing. Okay, so if he didn't put anything about pricing in there, you know, and how much money he's going to save with that Gas Gas, but my assumption he's going to save some, but for me, and if you're just saying which one would you choose, of course I would choose the new KTM for, for a multiple of reasons. We like the new bike. I know in Supercross and some of the pros have beaten up the new chassis and stuff. I think for us, Spencer, Donnie, myself, none of us feel like the new chassis is a big deal. Like It's not like we get off the bike and go, oh, I love the old one so much better. Never do we really say that, especially on the 350, the bike, the engine's so dang good. It's so much better than the older engine that you just really don't even think about it, right? Is that what you guys think? Yeah, also, you know, like, what kind of shape are you in? And I'm not trying to, because all of us vets probably have a little extra LBs, mm -hmm. and these bikes are designed for 175, and so that also affects how they ride. My point is, I cannot ever find what the chassis is doing right. <laughs> until I worry about myself. <laughs> and, yeah. and we're all gonna get the suspension done, typically for us. One thing I will say about that gas gas, uh, a feature I don't like from 23 and on is now all the bikes have brake tech uh, components for the clutch and, and brakes. It's noticeable, especially on the track. Now on the trail, maybe not as noticeable. You're not heating them up and using them as much, but it's definitely not as, as good as the Brembo stuff on the track. You can just feel it does not have the stopping power of the bike. So the bikes we did have this brake tech stuff on, I've, I have found and finagled my way to get some Brembo stuff put on those bikes. So, so the gas gas initially was supposed to be, I don't want to call it lower end, but yeah. less yeah. features. It, it was supposed can, to yeah. be less expensive. And our thought was, what, and I think MXA brought this up and some other people brought it up, is that MX, what gas gas should have done is just, just sold the older bikes for a while like been a couple years behind and just sell it as a new bike oh, right. you know so you could have a 24 but it's really a 22 ktm but it would have the good components but on it how does that affect racing because they need to be homogenized bikes no they still would be because yeah. they'd still be a 24 gas gas but it would be the older 22 ktm basically but i'm saying that those racers might not oh no like the old no for sure so not so they'd be a few years behind if you're on a gas gas so that's a good point so that would that would kill that and so but obviously they're not racing on brake tech they don't have to race on that. They're running Brimbo brakes and clutch sure. masters and so forth. So that's a reason I would probably shy away from the, because 
so those bikes are like a thousand dollars less and now with that 20 the, he's looking at the older generation one versus a new it's probably a fifteen hundred dollar less bike but those brake components and clutch components are worth a lot too and and i like that new generation bike so that's the way i would go and you're going to be good for a few years with that new gen so bike. i have a dumb question mm -hmm. so do is it possible for ktm and and uh, husky dealers to support that bike as well if you go to buy parts for that at a ktm dealer how would that work yeah they can they can get order everything they can from what i can tell yeah okay you just look up the numbers and they because you know you like a gas gas dealership could be a lot farther away than a ktm dealership if you want that. yeah yeah and you order and so a lot of times if i have a gas gas and i just i just look up a part i look up the ktm part for it now yeah. obviously the plastic's about the only thing that would be different we're talking about but as far as like an engine part or whatever a fuel pump or whatever it's all going to be the same I didn't know how that worked with KTM, you know, wanting to have their standalone stores and whatever. Yeah, I think you, on those kind of parts, you would just order the KTM version yeah. if you wanted to get around it. All right. Harley G. Aloha, Jay. I'm assuming he must be from Hawaii. I like this. What type of gas do you use for heating up bolts in your videos? Uh, map gas is on that. It's, it's in that yellow bottle. And what's nice about that is it gets hot really quick compared to just a regular propane bottle. So um, what's nice, I learned that from, I'm in no you know plumber or whatever or anything, but it's, it's, it's just a really quick heat. So if you're going to heat up uh, aluminum to put bearings in or anything like that, it's, it's way better because it goes really quick. Here's one right here, just like that. And you got the little, one of my favorite tools. Best that's, way to light a fire too. That's cool. That, that is helpful, huh? Oh yeah, I've, I've lit, I've lit uh, barbecues with that quite a bit. Are you running the other way quickly as well? No. All right. No, no, I'm not pouring gas on it. <laughs> uh, Adam H says, hey mate, was wondering what sort of hours you're seeing out of the KXs before doing top ends, uh, etc. Owner's manual recommends 15 hours, but I don't believe that for a second on a 450. So KX450, newer ones, the newer ones, I talked to Brad a little bit about this, the newer like 21-ish range, whatever they changed that new generation, they did improve the rod and crank. And that's a big difference because the older Kawasaki's had a lot of issues with the, the lower end, the cranks and so forth. So. I'm going to say most guys, and I talked to Brad, 50 hours at least on a top end. Now, that could be 50 to 80 hours, depending on for, for vet guys, you know. So 50 to 80 hours on a top end, and cranks, he's thinking 100, 100 to 150 hours on a crank. With with proper maintenance. With proper maintenance, yeah. of course. I have a buddy that has a Yamaha. Yeah. Same bottom end, not same top end or valves, 350 hours. What, what year is it? 450. I think it's, and it's a, the off-road one. The, the FX. The FX. Yeah. And I think it's like a 20. Yeah. 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 That's, 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 it, you take care of him like that. He was a, me a mechanic and he worked for Ty Davis for a while. Has he done valves on it, you think? Oh, yeah. Okay. He's done valves and piston. But yeah. okay. And probably cam chain. Yeah. Same bottom end. All right, Spence. What have we got next? Spiros S says, Hello, Jay. Talked to you a couple years back when I had a problem with my SXF and you helped me solve it. That now was I nice to me, huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, nice you're, you're pretty nice most of the time in person, too. <laughs> Uh, Rock, now he has a Rockstar FC 450 2022, and I'm trying to fit the connectivity unit, but I've had no luck at all. I paired it via Bluetooth to my iPhone. I'm trying to connect it through the app, and the fuel pump turns on, but I got no green light at all, and the connection air message appears. Any thoughts? My first thought is, if you did get this to work, you'd be the only one that did. So just stop and just unfortunately it was a it was a bad idea and concept from KTM. They were trying to do what K, what what Yamaha had done with their connectivity uh, tuner and KTM just kind of whiffed and missed it. We can see a spot on the new generation bikes on the rear fender where it looks like they have a spot in the plastic to put one in the future, uh, like where the Yamaha one goes on the rear fender, kind of tucked in their side. There's a spot where it looks like they've left an area for one. I think they'll probably come up with a better one in the future, but that first, that one that was out for like a year, year and a half, just terrible. No one got them to work. Unfortunately, I would I think you're gonna have to send your stock ECU to like Jamie at Twisted or get a Vortex, something like that. This was a promise that this would work. Yeah. Oh, you know, from KTM. Yeah. Yeah. They thought it was gonna work, and it was terrible. Even you know the media guys were out there trying to get it to work at the track. No one could get it to really work. It was oh boy. It was yeah. terrible. It was on the factory editions. It was a selling point, and it was on the handlebars. That was another problem. It was like a part of the bar pad. Yeah. yeah, part yeah. of the bar pad. Remember the way. So looked. if you wanted to run your you know your ODI bars and bar pad, you were like, oh no, you got to run this bar pad. So yeah. you were stuck. It was unfortunate. Mm. All right, Travis C. Hey Jay. I bought the GYTR Brembo hydraulic clutch kit for my 24YZ450F. Was wondering the best way to bleed and add fluid to it. Never done one before and want to make sure I do it right. 
Are there any special tools I might need? Thank you for the information, buddy. Okay, so two big things when you're when you're bleeding. First of all, we have videos. Sorry, we have videos on this, and we're gonna make a couple new ones this winter. Spencer's in town for a little while, so we're gonna make a clutch and a break bleeding one for the front and give you a little bit closer up. But the two big things are yes, it really helps to have a. We have Vacula is the name of the one we have. Um, the, a brake bleeder tool it's like 15 years old but there are some really good ones now like on amazon they're like 80 bucks and they're plenty good we have links in our google doc so it's the first time i mentioned the google doc in the show so i went like a quarter of the show without mentioning it so that's pretty good so we have links in there and spencer's kind of cleaned up that google doc a lot to where you can go find that number pretty or the link pretty easy having that bleed it out and then the last key step that i think a lot of guys don't do is how we finish up the brakes when we do a front brake, we push from the bottom, from the caliper, and I have Spencer's up top, or whoever's my wife's up top, looking and seeing if any bubbles come up. And we'll do that a few times to make sure no bubbles are coming up, and we show that in the video. But reverse bleeding it, pushing the caliper, which is kind of a pain, pushing those bubbles up. And you, Don, you've done it with me at my house, yeah. and it works awesome. We get just a credible feel. And I get a lot of guys write me, and I feel like that's the one step they're not doing, is that those bubbles get stuck, and I tap on the brake line in between. And they keep coming. And, and we keep coming. And we have to do, I do, I have a rule, three times I do this with zero bubbles, and then we're good. What about zip tying the lever? And then, and then we'll zip tie the lever overnight, usually we're good, okay. you know. And you want to lean the, the bars to like the highest point. To, yeah, so the brake line is. Don't just leave the bars straight. Yeah. And we have these cool little, you know, it's more expensive than a zip tie, but we have these cool little 3D printed ones that hold the lever. Uh, Tech 167 has them. I'll, I'll show a picture of one right about here or here especially with you because you recycle a lot of zip ties right there we go all right what's next spence <laughs> daniel m says what kind of coolant would you recommend for a 2022 gas gas ex 250f okay so really any of the automotive coolants that are 50 50 mix are just fine just stick with one uh, we run the peak one a lot of times because the price and they sponsored motocross like 30 years ago so really i don't have a huge uh you know experience in any that are way better or not better there are guys that run like a redline water wetter which is just a uh, that's going to help it be cooler or there's other there are things out there uh, systems to use the Evans is will run cooler but it's not a uh, water coolant it's more of an oil so the problem is with that you have to run only fill it up with their stuff you can't put coolant back in and mix them uh, but they do bring down temperatures but for for most part we just run a regular 50 50 mix auto uh, one and the peak one we like it's been good sounds good Alejandro M hello do you have a mechanic shop if so, can I have the address, please? So the answer is no. Unfortunately, we don't do any outside work. We, it's all I can do to keep up on the work we've had. I've mentioned that before. So it's tough to keep up on the work. If you're in SoCal, a lot of times I can connect you with some guys that can help. Uh, Brad does a lot of our engine work and carbs. I can send you to him, and he does a lot of our stuff. So I can send you to some people, hopefully, and, and help you. But unfortunately, we can't do any, can't keep up on our own stuff as it is. So two people have the same question. So Philip R. and Carol P. asked you the same question oh, yeah. at different times. They say, hey, Jay, just want to start off with saying how much I enjoy your content and thank you for the great tips and tricks. What's the white circular object on your tire changing stand? Material, where can I find it? Thanks for your advice okay so in the tire changing stands which we haven't mentioned in a while it, a lot of you know when we do tire changes uh, a lot of guys see the stand we use um, those have all been built by buddies or different people and it, those you can build on, on your own with our drawings so we had a good follower who drew up the the stand drawings that i just had done a youtube video showing the stand we use and he made a nice drawing of it so if you email us we'll send you the drawing and links to all these different videos that give you tips there's a guy in southern utah that that um, has a video showing all the materials, how he cut them and prepped everything. So it's really nice. So we got some good links in there to, to walk you through it. What he's talking about when you're finished, there's a piece of white piece because if you have just steel down there, it'll scratch your hub. So what we have is a piece of Delrin, and that's a machinist. Uh, a machinist. That's where I learned it from when I was a machinist. Is you have it's a hard piece of plastic, but it also wears a little bit, so you can wear through it. Now, if you you know that's a that's an expensive piece of material to buy to put on there, and you have to go to like a metal supply type place. Well, McMaster get, Car would have it. Yeah, so I places like that. that. Yeah. Now, what guys have found that works really well is simply your cutting board from the kitchen. So if you got an old cutting board, an old white cutting board, bring it out there, cut a piece out. And drill a hole, put it on there, and you're done. And then you're just going to be missing a circle when you put it back in the kitchen for your wife. So, <laughs> or you could go buy a thrift shop. Or you can cut your vegetables out in the garage. Right. 
with what's left with what's left <laughs> real so, small ones radishes small. yeah but yeah practically too so yeah, yeah. so the kitchen the kitchen cutting table uh, cutting board has worked perfect for a lot of guys and really cheap you can buy one at a thrift shop or a garage sale for probably like a buck or two bucks right? so how many times have you because i've done this yeah. like we you have multiple tools and everything but you've gone to the kitchen for a knife or something that you need to use in the garage yeah have you gotten busted for that oh yeah i've yeah. i got in big trouble for that several times <laughs> That's funny. Another tire related question comes from Travis C. He says, Hey Jay, I'm not sure what size motion program lock to get for my new wheels. I'm putting on a set of W wheels for my 2024 YZ 450F. Motion Pro offers four sizes to choose from 1.6, 1.85, 2.15, or 2.5. Thanks for the advice. Okay. So good question. First of all, and we do like the Motion Pro rim locks a lot. Like this style is like the, the stock really nice style where it's a cast aluminum and it's rubber coated this is our favorite style of rim lock this is a 215 so this will fit all 215 rims which is all the current 450s and even a lot of the 250fs now the current ones and then the 185 rim lock will fit your 125s and older 250fs so there's a on the rim there's those little spot written with the size of rim it'll say 1.85 with the x times 19 inch or 18 inch it'll say the the size so it, the rim the the width of your rim will always be on the rim itself so the fronts on all the big bikes are 1.6 so they're all be 1.6 wide so that's the rim lock you need to buy for a front and uh so that's pretty much it so you know simple deal uh rim lock very important you want to have that on there and the motion pro one's a good one yeah so it's time for a product highlight Product spotlight. What should we do today? Um, let's do. Gosh, well, let's do two really quick. Let's do two real quick. Okay, here we go. So these are for KTM guys with WP forks. These are black fork protectors. These are these go on your forks. The stock ones are red, like, and it's kind of an orangey red. And the reason I got these black ones is because I'm building a bike that's black and yellow for this Dunlop theme bike. And so I got these and we'll have the part number on our Google doc for these. If you, so if you're doing a bike and you want to have a different color, uh, WP has these they are like eight or nine bucks a piece and we can switch the color of that. The other thing we're doing on our new bike on our 23 24 we really don't like the start stop switch a lot of guys don't like it either so moto minded has these right here um, and there's some other brands out there too that we've used we use the Nihilio one this one is from moto minded and it has a, a start and a stop button so you can have one on each side and they're just firm good buttons so we're putting that on our 23 so those are really nice switches so i snuck two products in there on you because i brought too much stuff to we'll talk about a chain at another time but there's our pro x chain we'll talk about that's a, it's a good chain with the uh it smells good x-ring it yeah. does so we were all take I, I opened it out of the bag and we all took a smell so let's just talk about that it's a, it's an x-ring chain has little tiny o-rings it's not a full o-ring chain but this is a great chain long lasting and guys if you're buying chains and sprockets we use a steel reel sprocket we'll talk about that another time with pro x stuff so Awesome. All right, what's, what's next, guys? All right, Joe B. Hey, buddy. Joe B. Hey, buddy. My buddy has a 21 KTM 350 XCF for sale, and I don't want to lowball him. <sighs> I attached some photos. Bike only has 21 hours on it. Looking for his desert trail bike and maybe to try my hand on the track with it. Based on your videos, this sounds like a, a do-all kind of bike. What would you pay? Last year it can be registered ohv in california right okay so he brought up some a bunch of good points there first one is i probably wouldn't buy a bike from a buddy right like if you're worried about lowballing him then just go somewhere else or you're not good enough buddies i mean uh, like, maybe, I don't, a I don't, friend, maybe a frenemy a frenemy so don't I, I i think if it's gonna cause some contention here you don't because i've had guys that have kind of overpaid for bikes because it's from a buddy they, they've kind of gone well i didn't want to they're afraid to yeah deal with it you're right right so you know that's that that can be a bit of a weird situation right so that's my first thing on that and then as far as that bike yes they we talked about i think the last show we talked about how the xcf is probably the best all-around bike for most guys if you're gonna buy one bike you can ride the track the trail desert mountains anything is a 350 xcf so it's a great bike and as far as this california rule um, that's something that a lot of guys are concerned about, that they can actually register it in California so that at yeah, 21 you can. Um, I just bought a 24. You don't get anything. You get a MSO. Certificate of origin. Certificate of origin. That's all you get. 
you know, it's like, yep, you don't get no registration, you get nothing. Um, so when I'm riding in California, I'll just be winging it. I'm probably going to register the bike in Utah. I already have all the paperwork, so I'm probably going to just register it there. That's where most of our bikes are registered. And so our tax Mine have been there. registered in another state. In, in AZ. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I again, great bike. Um and uh, I, I would just, I don't know what, a good value in those bikes is probably, because I'm selling one and it's six to seven grand, depending upon the condition, how low hours, all those things. So Also, just be honest with your buddy. Yeah. And just say, look, this is what I, 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 I looked I'm on. Not, I looked on Facebook. I looked on Craigslist. That's it. Here's what they're going for. We're friends. So it should be 500 less than whatever this is. Right. <laughs> That's how exactly. I would see it. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Good guy deal. <laughs> Good guy awesome. deal. So this is the last question. It's from Bert. It says, hi, Jay. I'm 54 years old, intermediate vet rider, and weigh 180 pounds. I change my bike each season and have been riding a 350 for the past three years, both Husky and KTM. Looking at buying my next bike, and I've come down to the 2024 KTM 350 SXF or considering the new 2024 Yamaha YZ250F. What are your thoughts on the new YZ250F? I thought it might be time to switch it up for a season. Okay. Great question. Both bikes are amazing, right? Both bikes are amazing. And I love both bikes. My thought is that if you're racing, I think you're going to be disappointed on the 250. I mean, you're going to have to... To me, I like riding the 250, and uh, I don't take racing too serious, as you guys know. So I'm not really worried about um, when I'm you know up against a guy in a 450 that that i'm gonna be he's gonna be pulling me or whatever so if but if you're racing i think you're gonna give up too much on the start to the 450 guys and you're gonna get stuck behind a few 450s who are just ripping it out of turns but kind of slow everywhere else and pulling you on a hill or two you're gonna be disappointed the three the two the yamaha 250 is amazing and i have one that we're we're actually putting a dual injector on right now we'll have some reports on that soon that bike is really good and really fun but again, that's if I'm at the track riding by myself on a practice day, say at Glen Helen, it's awesome. And that's really what I enjoy doing. That's kind of like my, you know, golf or soccer or hobby that anybody else would have, right? Is just riding moto and I'm not racing. Now, this guy sounds like he's an intermediate, that intermediate racer. I think he's gonna be bummed. And so I think with that 350 SXF, he's not gonna be giving that up. And so that's probably what I would say to stick to. What's the weight difference between those two bikes? Gosh, I don't know. It's not much at all. Right. So, like, no. if it's not much. No. Right. So, definitely not a weight issue. And the, but, you know, there's no replacement for displacement, as Jamie says. And at the end of the day, that bike is, you know, 100 cc's more. You know, so there's no replacement for that. And no dual injector, no pipe, no porting is going to make up for that difference. You're just going to get these small incremental differences. It's going to rip and be faster than other 250s, but it's never going to be as competitive as that 350. And that 350, if you just add an ECU, then it becomes a whole nother thing just with an ECU. It's, it's incredible. So you know that with yours. Um, there's our 350 uh, XCF, very similar bike. And, yeah. and the orange one looks nicer. No, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. All right. What's that? We're all, you check, we're CD all done time. on questions. Man, yeah. that's incredible. We, awesome knocked, job. we knocked all those out. This is Rat, okay? No, not to be confused. Uh, was that Geico commercial? Remember? Got yeah, oh, that was so funny. You yeah, got yeah. rats in the house and they're in the basement <laughs> drumming. So really fun band, really cool band. Is that it, Stephen Piercy? Yep, Stephen yeah, Piercy. Yeah. This, is, well, this one's called 81 to 91. I kind of call these the best years of my life. Right? Were these the best years of your life, Donnie? I would say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now the next 33 years have been pretty good too. But here, you, don't, you didn't have any mortgage to pay. You know, no stress really in life, right? Yeah. yeah. Donnie, Donnie doesn't want to answer these. He's really concerned <laughs> about the 81 and 91 being the best years of his life. Well, the, the thing is, I uh, <laughs> because I did have kids a little later in life, right? right because I have a eight-year-old right now. And, uh, you know, I try to explain to my son, I'm like, you don't know how good the 80s were. And he's like, yeah, yeah, old man, you don't know. I'm like, I'm telling you, it was really good. Atari and Nintendo and... Uh, First video games, the dirt oh. bikes were just getting better. Remember, the early 80s, they weren't that great. But by mid-80s, they, they started figuring out. And like that 88 Honda, great bike. Yeah. The, it started really taking off. When, and Donnie and I talk legit when we were... Now, this is some bad parenting as well, because we didn't have you know, ones that, you know, the best there. So the, 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 when we were... The, when the lights came on, the street lights came on, that was when you're supposed to come home, you know, kind of range, you know? Yeah. And we were gone for... 
hours. No, no, we weren't allowed in the house during the day. <laughs> they would say, go out and play. We don't want you here. Gone. On our bicycles. We're talking five to seven miles away. How far would you go? I'd go farther. I'd go from my house in Santa Ana to the beach. Right. You're just at, gone. At 13, I'd be gone. In in the washes. I remember getting crawdads under the thing, you know, like all kinds of stuff. So like you're gone. Anyway, 81 and 91. We got off topic here, but this is, I usually don't like best of albums. Okay. As a rule, because they cherry pick, because I've always said how I like an entire album. But this album is incredible, and it has their their first album, which is like an EP, and it has some really cool songs from there. And then the ones you know, you know, lack of communication and and round and round. And then, but the, what's really cool about this one is the last four songs. And the last song was on. Remember that movie Point Break? Oh, you bet. Yeah, yeah. So it was on the soundtrack for that. So, Bodie. Yeah, yeah. Was, okay. Uh, so it was character. nobody yeah. rides. Yeah. Nobody rides for free was the song on on that Point Break. And the last four songs are brand new songs. You know, then in '91, it was giving yourself away, one step away. Heads I win, tails you lose, and then nobody rides for free. Nineteen songs, not a not a throwaway on there. Genius! They put all their old songs first, so you're getting back into them, yep. and then boom, they they and, it was and you had these ones. four new songs, yeah. and all four of the new songs were awesome, awesome. in '91. And yeah. then what came after '91 was right then, right in here was Nirvana, and it just all got ruined, and we just wanted yeah. to go because then you had to listen to this music that makes you want to. <laughs> Right? Uh, yeah, that, that's a possibility. Okay. Plus, plus uh, you had to go out and buy flannel, too. Right. So if you wore yeah. flannel and you lived in cold areas, you just wanted to... Yeah. Yeah. So, unfortunately, so this music right here will not make you want to... And so that's, that should be a selling point right there, right? Happy, good, clean, rock and roll won't make you want to... So, uh, so anyway, great, great album if you can find it. Hey, what's really cool about this? You see the sticker right here, Donnie? Yeah. What's that sticker from? That's uh, from a uh, uh, warehouse. Yep, yeah. from a used store. Is it, this one up in Ventura where I live. Oh. Six bucks. Nice. I got this CD for, and and you would buy used CDs, and they they could be three or four months old. Somebody would turn it in because you would get like I don't know. So like if you might get three or four bucks turning it in. And then they'd sell it for six or whatever, yeah. you know. So uh, I was cheap and bought plenty of UCDs, so I left the sticker on there. So that was cool. And I probably got this in 91 or 92 uh, like like that. So pretty cool. Like I said, I wasn't a big fan of Best Of albums, but this one was pretty dang good. So that's been a pretty good show. What do you, you guys think? Yeah, it's pretty good. All awesome. right, Donnie, what do you got pretty to good. close us off? Donnie likes to give our uh, closing question, which is a complete surprise. Yeah, I don't tell you what's going on. All right. Yeah. So when you're doing a project, how do you decide what you want to do on that bike? Hmm. Well, I guess it can, you know, there's is that a moving target too? Yeah, because it, it all depends on the, you know a lot of the bikes nowadays are so dang good. That's another problem. So the current bikes, a current bike, a lot of time these current four strokes especially, man, it's just adding an ECU and suspension, right? Like the bikes are so dang good. You don't have to do a lot. You get that with an FMF pipe, and then it's then it's you know, tuning things, like fine tuning things, making them better. Um, the only people really building engines per se are 250s, you know, like the race team 250s, you know, and in, on the 450s and stuff, it's small tweaks. Like Jamie has a different, uh, you know, uh, at Twisted has a, what do you call that piece that goes on the exhaust, that f exhaust flange. Yeah. And it meshes in there and it makes the, the 450s and our th EXCs, the 450 and 500 EXCs, makes them run so much better because it matches up to the port and runs really well. So it's fine tuning. So it's, it's finding those little things that are wrong with a current bike that you can improve like that. And then if it's the older bikes, then it's just like, hey, it's everything, right? Like you, you tear it down to the frame. You, you know, hey, we're gonna get the frame powder coated. We're gonna address all these broken parts and then decide how far we're gonna go. So, it, but it's the new bikes are so good, you don't have to do a ton typically. It's you know a lot of cosmetics and fine tuning to make the suspension better, especially for you, and then making that thing run perfect. The, what's what's incredible? A, a well jetted or mapped bike is incredible. You know that when it oh, just yeah. when it's perfect, doesn't pop at all, and it's perfect. That's it's amazing. It's it's just a work of art, right? Yep. So anyway, so that's my thoughts on that. What, that do you, what anything else, Vince? That's it. So I hope you guys are all enjoying Supercross season. You guys aren't trapped in the house too much wherever you're living. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of cool stuff. Use our links to uh, buy, and we'll see you next time. We work with some great companies, and here's a list of those right now. Dunlop Motorcycle Tires. Wisco Piston. Vinco Air Shocks and Dirt Bike Parts. FMF Exhaust. Decal Works Graphics. 
Pro X Racing Parts, Recluse Clutch Revolution, Motion Pro Specialty Motorcycle Tools, Works Connection, Uni Filter, Klotz Oil, Kometic Gasket, MX Plastics, JE Pistons, Cardo Systems, ODI Bars and Grips. And remember, if you shop Rocky Mountain, use our link from our site, Linktree, or link in the description of the videos. Thanks for watching and listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.